the one and only DNVR. Two girls out to Zach Mays Arcade at the bar. Three for Mr. B in that old trophy case. Number four we're still waiting for. Well, bring on the chase. Out on the field at Mile High, Broncos win is our desire. Couple with Breck, Brew and a friend bleed on Jim Blue to the bitter end. Come and join us, DDNVR. We are DNVR. We are DNVR and we are live here at the DNVR bar from Studio A. And today the A stands for um another one yeah we did that yesterday though. another another <laughs> one uh a stable ah, a stable hey boo yeah i know i know mace isn't here though so what about stable good. you know really stable a. Yes. The a stands for stable yes. i like that i like that yeah, as russell wilson said broncos have a stable mm. of running backs now and i'll be honest zach I have some conflicting thoughts. Of course you do. Yeah, I and, and I actually think I said this to Kale right before we started. I think we're going to disagree on this. We'll see. Something we don't do very often, and so it brings a smile to my face. It does. I love disagreeing <laughs> with you. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, but first a shout-out to our presenting sponsor, MSU Denver Online, msudenver.edu slash online. Henry... You can't police me. That's Mace's job, and he's not uh, here, so I get to run free today. No, he's reining you back in. Substitute teacher of no one. He's There's the, no teacher. He's the no fun police here coming in. in the Unbelievable. Uh, let's talk about it in a second. But again, msudenver.edu slash online where you can go to scope out all they have to offer. 750 total classes, uh, all sorts of different programs, something for everyone over there, especially if you're looking to maintain a full-time job while furthering that education, because MSU Denver students work twice as many hours as students attending any other Colorado institution. All right, let's jump in. First, wait for the music, an update from Zach in sports. Well, Ryan, the Denver Broncos have officially agreed to terms with running back Melvin Gordon on a one-year deal worth up to $5 million with a starting around $2.5 million. What's it mean? We'll throw it over to Ryan. Thanks, Zach. Uh, <laughs> it means that this, this take that I have is way too nuanced for Twitter. Um, ah. I, I wanted to tweet about it last night. I ended up just retweeting the graphic moving on <laughs> because I have too many thoughts. Um, and I guess it starts here. Melvin Gordon is an awesome running back. Um, he's really good at running the ball, like absolutely worth every penny when it comes to how good Melvin Gordon is at running the ball. And he's a running back. And he and is he's a running good back. good at running. And he's really okay, good at okay, running the ball. Okay, just wanted to make that clear as you continue to evolve this very sophisticated take. Here's the issue. Uh-oh. He's too good. Oh. Because here's what's going to happen. And everyone who wants to sign off on this take is saying the same thing. Well, as long as he knows he's the number two, um, he, you know, then I'm cool with it. Um, as long as Javante, you know, gets the lion's share of the carry, I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm sorry to tell you guys, that's not what's going to happen uh, because Melvin Gordon is too good for that to happen. And here's, and I will tell you guys exactly what is going to happen. They're going to essentially lean Javante early in the season and Javante will be awesome and he'll be great, but advanced statistics and maybe even basic statistics are going to say, Melvin Gordon is better than Javante Williams and more reliable in terms of how many yards he actually gets per carry. Not averaging four yards per carry with, you know, four 20-yard runs and four one-yard runs. That would be 10 yards a carry. But you know what I'm saying. Um, that would be Javante. Right. And that's how Javante does it. And Javante is awesome. And we can only assume he's going to get better, um, better vision, all that stuff. But what's going to happen is Melvin Gordon is going to be averaging a very solid four yards, maybe more, per carry consistently. And when Just Nathan as he did last year. Right. And when Nathaniel Hackett goes to call plays on first down and Javante Williams gets one yard, he's going to say, man, if we, had, if we had Melvin out there, it would have been four. And 
so what's going to happen is Melvin Gordon is going to end up having a very similar uh, carry number, just like he did last year, to Javante Williams, and I think that's going to bother people. And then, of course, the elephant in the room. What's going to happen is Melvin Gordon going to be more the more consistent guy. He's going to end up getting the ball on big drives because, again, got to start that with that four-yard pop to get the drive started to get on schedule and he is going to fumble and people are going to lose their absolute minds so that's where i land on this it's it's so difficult to have a true hammer it in one sentence hot take on this because it's just not that simple and the truth is on most carries melvin gordon is going to be better than javante williams and Javante is going to have his pop runs and it's going to be really difficult to keep the ball out of Melvin's hands because he's really good. That's good for the Broncos if it weren't for that elephant in the room. Mm, and that was going to be my question, Ryan, as you were phrasing this as in, in, in a way of kind of defending against people not liking this move in terms of Melvin's going to be getting the ball more than people want. But when I was hearing your argument, what I was hearing was, okay, well, that's good for the Broncos that they got, got a guy that's consistent. That's good that they got a guy that they're going to be able to trust to get four, four yards, four and a half, five yards every time he touches the ball. That means that's good for the Denver Broncos. Sure it's good for the Broncos. And so if you have Javante Williams on your fantasy team, this sucks. If you have Melvin Gordon on your family fantasy team, this also probably sucks because yeah. you were hoping in the offseason he was going to go to the Bills yeah. and eat there. But Melvin Gordon, he's a damn good football player. Like sure you is. said, I totally agree with you. He is a really good running back. He is really good on third down. He is really good in the end zone. Ryan, he has 20 touchdowns in Denver. That's probably more than anyone on the Broncos Definitely. has, including quarterbacks in the past two years. That is <laughs> crazy. And uh, he does he does fumble occasionally. And yep. the, the biggest thing with Melvin is he doesn't fumble all the time. But like you said, he, he has f some fumbles in the past two years at very costly situations. And that's a bummer. But you know what? You also have to put that in perspective with what Javante Williams has done. Now, Javante Williams, being a rookie, I think you give him a little bit of a break. But let's just say Javante stays where he is. He had two fumbles last year. Melvin Gordon, three fumbles. So let's not blow this out of proportion thinking that Melvin Gordon fumbles every single game when the Broncos have the ball in the fourth quarter with the lead. Of course could, not. Could it happen this year? Sure, it certainly could. And will, will I be, you know, crossing my fingers when Melvin gets the ball for his sake so that he's not killed and so the Broncos aren't put in a bad situation? I absolutely will be. And that's one thing that you, that you emphasize to him is, is hold on to the ball, hold on to the ball. But you got a really good running back, and that is something the Broncos also got a fantastic deal in my mind. If Melvin Gordon gets $5 million this year, he had a hell of a year. The Broncos had a hell of a year. If he only gets $2.5 million, that's a fantastic deal for the Broncos. Yeah, of course. And, and that's why I agree with you. This is a good move for the Denver Broncos. It's just I'm nervous, and I legitimately have anxiety thinking about the fact that in the second quarter of a one-score game in the playoffs, Melvin Gordon's going to be getting the ball, and every time he touches the ball, I'm going to be fully clenched, hoping that he doesn't fumble it. Uh, in fact, last year, I came, oh, I almost came all the way around on Melvin Gordon, and I, in fact, from the stands at Mile High, tweeted, appreciate Melvin Gordon. And then, like, five plays later, he fumbled. So I'm just so conflicted, and... Uh, the 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 optimist in me says what if he just doesn't fumble this year um now the the stats would say that's very unlikely but it's not impossible i mean if you think about it this way it's three times over the i mean three out of 203 carries yep. he fumbled the ball on so could you eliminate those you know i always say like to beginner golfers or at least guys who are shooting like 100 and like the only difference between 100 and breaking 90 is shanking it if you take those 10 shanks out or three or four shanks that end up costing you 10 shots you're gonna break 90. can you take the three bad carries out and go from really really good running back to great running back for the broncos this year i think it's possible I'm not going to hold my breath on it because it's sort of like signing Bryce Callahan and holding your breath that he's not going to get injured. 
but it's it's definitely possible and you know that's what we'll be crossing our fingers for because i just know that people are going to be in wait and see mode with melvin gordon and it's pretty much gonna have to go the entire season perfect with no fumbles which most running backs don't do save for philip Lindsay. um for people to like forgive him and trust him well and, and two things to that is one of the things is you said he has to not fumble well that's probably not going to happen because like you said most running backs do fumble you hope that one or two fumbles that he has this year come in the second quarter and russell wilson's able to get the ball back with plenty of time left uh because javante is also probably going to fumble and you hope it's in those non-consequential situations it here's reason to believe that he will lessen the fumbles. Two back-to-back years in 2016, or no, in 2017 and 2018, and he played all 16 games in, in one of those seasons. He had one fumble each season. Love it. So you, you do that, you're much better. Uh, he's had one fumble or one season with two fumbles. Then the past three years, he had four fumbles, four fumbles, uh, and then three fumbles last year. Here's another reason about why I think this is a little bit overblown. Talking about consequential interceptions, or uh, consequential turnovers, Joe Burrow had six interceptions in the fourth quarter last year. I can, Derek Carr had four interceptions in the fourth quarter last year. Uh, I'm trying to look up good players. Lamar Jackson had four interceptions last year. Baker Mayfield, four. Uh, and, And you go down the list, and what you find out is pretty much every quarterback had multiple fourth quarter interceptions. Now, I understand the quarterbacks touch the ball more, but Joe Burrow was tied for the third most interceptions in the fourth quarter. He's, he's a damn good football player, isn't he? And he's so are considered you, clutch. So are, are you saying take the ball out of his hand? No. Are you saying you don't want him on your team? So no. to, to me, that's where I'm at. Okay, you're really going to hold these. And what? It was two fumbles in the fourth quarter, I believe, that Melvin Gordon had last year. Yes. I think one of them wasn't. Um, I, remember. I remember the Eagles, and I remember the Chiefs. You hope he doesn't do that, but look, I'm not passing up on Joe Burrow because he's throwing fourth-quarter interceptions. No, of course not, but I would push back on that take a little bit just because I'd want to know the situations of those turnovers. Were they were they down? Were they, for, were they forced to press the ball? You know, Were they um, throwing into dime coverage because they knew they needed to get it down the field, or were they nursing a lead or driving towards a lead and had the interception i we just don't know you know we can't go through every single one of those interceptions that you reference i think quarterbacks are a little more prone to turn the ball over in the fourth quarter because they're being asked to press with that being said i agree with you it's not it feels like a bigger deal than it is because of the situations that's happened in and because of a reputation you know it's the same thing as like garrett bowles every time he holds it feels like it's this massive thing as if no one else does it you know um but everyone does it Every offensive lineman gets popped for a couple holds every year. And Garrett, even if he goes under the league average this year, which what would you guess is the league average in holdings for an offensive lineman? Four? Yeah, I was going to say three. Yeah. Um, even if he if, – if, let's say it's four. If he goes three or if it's three and he goes three, everyone will – all three are going to feel like just a massive right. deal. Right. And it's just that's just based on reputation. You get the You get that reputation as a fumbler, then you fumble. I mean, I remember two years ago – or yeah, two years ago, they did the flea flicker and Melvin threw it over Drew's head. That counted towards his fumbles and it and it was used against him when really it had nothing to do with his ball security. It was just a really bad toss. Um, so reputation plays a big role in this. If he can fumble at better times, uh, maybe even the Broncos can recover the fumbles. Uh, maybe the quarterback this year, although I don't want him to risk injury at all, but maybe the quarterback this year actually makes an attempt on the return um, so that it doesn't end up being a 14-point swing on the fumble. All of that stuff could make a huge difference. The move is a good move. What I don't want to hear is it's a good move as long as he gets, as long as everyone knows that Javante is number one because I just don't believe that's what's going to end up happening. Mm. I love Javante as much as the next guy. He's not consistent yet. Melvin Gordon, the king of consistency. Um, you know, he had a couple big runs last year, but his runs are usually fall between the three and seven yard range. And it's just a great, reliable feeling as an offensive coordinator, a play caller in this case, to just be like, yeah, I'm going to hand the ball to Melvin on first down and he's going to get us a second and seven or second and six. 
Man, I think I think Melvin is going to be the second guy this year. I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think. So I think I, I disagree just a little bit. I think it's still going to be Javante. Uh, but what Justin Alton said today was they're going to ride the hot hand. And so that hot hand could be Melvin one week, could be Javante the next. You kind of rolled your eyes when I said that because we, we, we hear that answer quite often. And I hope, I think that's ideal. If Mel, if Javante is just bull rushing people and treating them like, like a bull pins out there then he should just continue to get carries if Melvin Gordon is getting seven yards a carry keep handing the ball off to him I hope that's what we see at the end of the year I think we're talking 55 45 in terms of carries leaning leaning toward Javante I think Javante is the one that gets to start this year and we kind of see some separation but it's not going to be nearly as much separation as a lot of fans want to see yeah, and again, this is kind of the problem you have with the Broncos, a good problem to have a lot of weapons, but you could, as Henry's mentioning in the comments, get both of them out there at the same time. You know, you could even line up Javante at fullback and do some inside stuff. You could fake it inside and flip it outside. You can line them both up in the shotgun next to Russell Wilson. There's a lot of different things you could do, and we didn't see it all that much, but Javante was heralded as a really good pass catching back as well. Remember, there was the the tweet that we read on draft day. I think it was from D- Josina Anderson that was like, he's a mix of Nick Chubb, Christian McCaffrey, and Alvin Kamara or something like that. Right. Um, so, you know, the these both of these guys are well-rounded weapons that you'd love to put out the, on the field at the same time. That just means you're going to take a receiving weapon off the field, um, which, you know, depending on the situation, could work for you. So... I like it. I like the move. Um, I just, I think at the end of the day, it's either going to be neck and neck, just like it was last year, or Melvin gets a couple more carries. And I'm okay with that as long as he doesn't cost them two games like he did last season, because that will be the difference in, in potentially winning the division and, you know, getting third. Quick question. Philip Lindsay was brought up earlier this week because he said he wanted to be back with the Broncos or was open to being back with the Broncos. Is there any hope of that now? No. Yeah, no. No, um, and I don't really think there was ever all that much hope. I agree. I would have made – before Melvin, Here, this would have been my case for Phil. Okay. And it has very little to do with him as a running back um, because I would have brought him in as the third running back behind Mike Boone um, and, you know, given him the opportunity to earn that second job. The energy. He's such a perfect match with Russell Wilson and, and Nathaniel Hackett in terms of the energy that he brings every day that I just think you would have gotten him for pennies. Mm. and it would have been a worthy addition to the locker room. And we know he's capable of doing big things on the field as well. So you bring him in essentially as a locker room piece and say, hey, if you can recapture some of that old magic, we'll give you the ball. Broncos don't need energy, though. They have all the energy they need. Now, I'm not saying you don't want to bring more energy in, it's just about but you simply don't culture need that. Fit. It's, a, it's about a culture fit. You don't need it, but you, you need to fill out a roster. So should the Broncos have signed Philip Lindsay instead of Melvin Gordon? Absolutely not. I and I agree with you there. And yeah. and, and I think we both agree with you there with with each other there. And uh, Ryan, I just got dunked on. I just got dunked on. By who? Tell you right after. Oh I tell you about God. coming down to the DNVR bar tonight. It is going to be awesome game Hopefully at some 8 people p.m. in uh, gold and blue get dunked on. Oh, I hope so. And we're watching it right here at the bar because Nuggets and Warriors, huge game tonight. And you got to be at the DNVR bar. Of course, the game is not in Denver. So this is literally the best place in Denver to watch the game tonight. Come by. The vibes are going to be awesome. I love the people aren't going to be bringing the, this is the last game of the series vibes. They're going to be bringing the, we're going to be back here on Friday night when the Nuggets come back home so come to the bar for what's going to be an awesome game i'll be honest i'm fighting my own heart here i don't want to get my hopes up Mm. uh it's too if they win tonight my hopes are going to be in dangerous levels (laughs) um but i'm doing everything i can to just keep my hopes nice and low tonight that's how i came into last game um so either way it's going to be a blast here at the bar hope you guys hang out it's like a perfect day to hang out in in a bar especially our bar yeah like the weather's not bad, so that's not going to stop you from nope. going out. But it's also not nice where you're like, oh, maybe we should go you know, sit on a patio or something. It's perfect. Come into the bar, have some drinks, hang out. It won't be like freezing when you go out to your car after the game. It's like a perfect, perfect bar night.
It is. It really is. And it's a Wednesday night. You're already on the second half of the week. Exactly. We're over the hump. Yep. Um, probably like right around now would be exactly where the hump is. Yep. Yep. And we're over it. Um, and that means it's probably time for a Breck Brew. Mm-hmm. Uh, so come on down to the bar tonight. Get yourself a 22-ounce member beer, um, which is awesome. In fact, right now, um, our bartender doesn't like this because he doesn't like the way that it looks. But since we're going plastic for the playoffs, when you get your member beer, you get a big one and then a little <laughs> one on the side. And I was like, dude, this is like you get an appetizer for your entree. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's a great. I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> uh, it's obviously not something we would do all the time, but it's a you know, um, Eric called it like you get a sidecar for your motorcycle. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that. I also love winning one hundred and fifty dollars by not doing anything. And all you have to do, bet $5 on tonight's Nuggets game. You can bet on the Nuggets or the Warriors if you want to do something as crazy as that. And you get $150 in free bets right when you place the bet. If you don't want to bet on the Nuggets, you can bet on any NBA game in this opening series. You'll get $150 in your account right away. And you also have to check out everything that DraftKings has going on. The last time Nuggets played on Sunday, Ryan, DraftKings gave out three 50% profit boost and different types of bets that you could place. Took advantage of that. So easy. So much fun. They're doing that every single day. So head to the App Store now. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. And use promo code DNVR when you sign up to get this can't-miss offer of $150 in free bets by just placing one $5 bet on any NBA game. Uh, And, of course, you must be a new user, uh, and it's a minimum $5 deposit. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. So I'm dunked on. Right uh, now, uh, uh, mid-show, uh, Ryan, happened uh, about, uh, I don't know, seven minutes ago. I don't know if you saw me sweating a little bit. I didn't. I asked a question yesterday in a press conference, immediately yes. tweeted out by the Broncos. Um, I s- still stand by the question. Tell me if I shouldn't stand by the question. Kale, can we pull it up since I said the Broncos tweeted it out, please? Oh, no. Oh, man. I even, I even sent. Here we go. Here we go. Now, you got to listen really quietly to hear my question. Uh, why wouldn't I be? Okay. So I, I essentially said, and this was right after he got questions about, you feel disrespected, back-to-back years, being cut by the Broncos, being brought back half the pay, uh, and, you know, being an older guy, do you feel like you've lost anything? So I, fe- I felt it was okay to ask, do you, do you want and do you expect, or do you expect uh, and have the Broncos told you that you're going to be in every down safety at 33-34? And let me just say this. The the question got a great response. So it was a good question. Thank you. Thank you. I thought so too, because it was a, it was a quick, easy answer that, that kind of, uh, all right, tell me what happened and then I'll, I'll give my, my piece. Let's pull up Kareem Jackson's Twitter do we, account. Do we have right this right, right here? Kale, oh, you can, you can just click Kareem. it right there. Don't worry. It'll be his first tweet that pops up. Here we go. Oh, okay. So, yeah. By far the dumbest question I've received in my <laughs> career. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Oh, Kareem. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, first of all, you didn't get tagged like Albright did last night. Yeah, time, that's so true. Good that's for true. you. Yes. Um, here's the thing, Kareem. It's not a shot. The question is not a shot at you, and I don't think it's a bad question. It's kind of a softball for him. It was, but a lot of times you ask a question, and guys assume that you are. Yeah. You presume the other thing just because you asked the question. You're giving him an opportunity to say his piece, right. which is your job. Right. Uh, you know, you ask something that people are curious about. Obviously, Caden Stearns is in the fold. The Broncos are going to want to play him. Um, who knows, you know, who's better in, in pass coverage going down the field. I, I, you know, I haven't seen enough of Caden to really know. Uh, but it's a totally fair question. And just because you asked the question – does not mean you presumed the opposite. Right, exactly. No, in fact, I think when we talked about it, he's 100% the starter. Uh, and I just wanted to see if if he had heard anything from the Broncos that maybe he's going to... Because remember Von Miller. Uh, last year or two years ago, he was asked about... We were talking about uh, if he's still an every-down player. And he said, yeah, but when I'm not an every-down player, I'm going to be that third-down guy, and you're going to know it, and I'm going to embrace that role. I'm curious if, if Kareem was at all thinking that way, being in, in his 30s. Clearly not. And Kareem, I apologize for the question. I don't, I don't <laughs> think you have to apologize. I think he's the one who has to apologize. Um, not a bad question. You got a good answer, so that instantly means it was a good question. Um, I don't know why he's upset about it. It's like if you ask your girlfriend what's wrong. Mm-hmm. 
and she says nothing. Right. And then you're just like, okay. Right. You know? Right. 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 A- right. And then she's like, why would something be wrong? And you're like, right. no, no, right, I, right. I, I, I misread the situation. Yep. We're good. Yep. Um, let's move on. Yep. I wasn't, it, yeah, I'm not apologizing for the question. I'm sorry you took it that way, Kareem, because I wasn't saying that at all. No, you weren't, but you know, that's, that's, and now, I don't know if guys I need- just dunked on myself even more by bringing it up. No, it's good. It's good to uh, <laughs> embrace debate, right? Like we do here on the show. I um, I don't get it. I, I well, I do get it. These guys need chips on their shoulder. They need motivation any way they can get it. It's it's kind of like when you talk about trading a guy in a way of you say Broncos should trade, put Jerry Judy in a package in order to get Aaron Rodgers, and Jerry Judy gets upset about it. Or I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. Von Miller actually, uh, I think, has been upset about that uh, with our friend Brandon Stokely for yep. in the past about trading him. If you have trade value, it's because you're good. Right. Or the, the same, speaking of Stokely and Zach, you know, they asked Von Miller, would you be willing to take a pay cut to come back to Denver? And he took that as like some huge slight. You could just say no. Right. And that was the point of the question was to get your opinion on what, you know, because it's about what people are talking, you know, what, what the narrative says out there. And the narrative at the time was, oh, yeah, you can get Von. He'll take a hometown discount to right. come back. Right. So you ask the guy, you know, directly how he feels about what people are saying out there to give him an opportunity to speak on it. Right, exactly. All right, shall we jump in to the final day of our player preview series, Ryan? Because tomorrow is the draft, and we've got two players to preview. And first, we'll go to Sam Williams, an edge player from Old Miss. He's six foot four, 261 pounds. Last yes, bit of piece yes. I have on this. The Broncos tweeted that out. They better play him every single down of the season. Ah, yes, they better. <laughs> or else they've got <laughs> they some better. answering to do. They do, and answering to Kareem himself. Yep, yep, yep. exactly. <laughs> I like that. So let's hop into Sam Williams and talk about if he's an every-down player. Uh, outside linebacker from Mississippi State, six foot four, 261 pounds. His strengths, according to our draft guys, explosive get-off to get around tackles and shoot gaps inside. He's a versatile player that shows good hand use versus run and pass. His weakness... He's a one-year wonder. Exploded for his career high in sacks, 12 and a half, mm. and tackles for a loss, 15 mm. in 2021. Older prospect that took extra year of eligibility due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Damn, you had me until the very end. Um, no, I, I like the guy. Uh, and we talked about, who's the edge we talked about just the other day? Yes, from uh, it was uh, the guy from Oklahoma. Right, uh, Benito. Yes, yes, yes. I was on with Ryan and Ben earlier today. They're calling him uh, Casa Benito. Oh, I like that. I like, <laughs> yes. that. I like that. Um, so my thought on this is I didn't like his size. Kind of like Sam Williams' size a little bit more. Mm. Um, got, a, I guess, 13, 14 more pounds on the yep. frame with a lot of room to add to that, I think, when you just look at his build. Yep. Um, so as we talk about, you know, building an all-around pass rusher, which is something the Broncos are going to desperately need probably in one year, um, this guy looks more like the type who could become both of those. Like, like you saw the sack and the tackle for lost numbers. That means he's getting back there in both situations. So, uh, I'm more of a fan here. Um, there's so much edge talent in this draft yep. that I'm really going to trust the scouting staff and George Payton to get the guy that they like the best at the position that they think fits. Um, so, it really is a matter of preference, right? What are you looking for? Do you just want speed? Um, do you really want a guy who can get around that edge and bend and, and get after passers because you're going up against the Chiefs and the Chargers who have literally no interest in running the ball? Well, then maybe Benito's more your guy. Mm-hmm. Um, are you looking for a, a Bradley Chubb replacement? Then maybe you need to go for a little bit bigger, more well-rounded guy such as Sam Williams. So I want to see what they think, right. and I'm going to trust them. As long as they don't go, you know, go crazy on us. Like a punter. (laughs) (laughs) Also, by the way, can we talk about that? Um, We we put it out yesterday, pod poll. Would you spend a third round pick on a generational punter? There was some debate if there's such thing as a generational punter. I don't know how that could be debated. You think there is? Absolutely. I, I think so, too. There could be a generational anything, a generational coach, a generational sales manager. Yeah, a, I, you know. I think so, too. If you're really, really good at your job and you do it for 10 years. Once in a generation. There you go. Yes. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, and uh, there was even, I think, the uh, Seahawks, one of the Seahawks blogs got in on it, and we're uh. talking about Michael Dixon. 
uh, saying yeah. he's he's a generational punter. Yeah, I think he is. Yeah, I agree. And I think they drafted him in the fourth round. Yeah. Yeah. So there uh, you go. Was it third? Maybe the fifth. Okay, fifth. Okay, but not a third round pick. I would not blame the Broncos if they do it. Not the third. Not the third. I agree. I agree. A day three pick. That's a day three. Big pick. difference between round three and round four because it's day two and day four. And speaking of Sam Williams. A really quick answer to this question. Pat McAfee was the punter of the decade per PFF. Was he generational? No, he was not. Why? I don't think he was. Oh, he just wasn't that type. He just gotcha. wasn't that much yeah, better yeah. than everyone right, else. Right, right, yeah. And generational is a special, special talent. Right. You know, the last, well, I guess people said Trevor Lawrence, to be seen if he's actually generational. But before that, it was Andrew Luck. He was absolutely generational. Right, right. Peyton Manning, you go back. Generational. Yep. John Elway, generational. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and Sam Williams, speaking of third, fourth round guys, he actually could fall to the third round and could be the Broncos pick in the third round. He's kind of a second to fourth round guy, potentially. Uh, and one thing that I love about him, 261 pounds, six foot four. Four four six forty time, Ryan. Sheesh. So he is an athlete. He so has that speed off the edge. He might be. Is he even faster than Benito? I think so. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of freaky. And what's uh, what's a uh, Randy Gregory specs? His size and uh, weight. He's very close to that. That's what I was gonna say. He kind of gives me Randy Gregory mm, vibes. That's a really good point. Randy Gregory is six five, and let me pull up his weight. Six five two fifty eight. So uh, really close. Yep. Uh, really close. Yeah. That's. I mean, clearly that's uh, George Payton's type. Yes. Because he wanted, apparently, Randy Gregory over anyone else. How worried are you about a one-year wonder? With Randy Gregory? No, oh, with, with, uh, with, with Sam Williams, yep. Jeez, it just got gnarly out. Um, yeah. A little bit? A little bit. isn't Ojabo kind of a one-year guy? Yeah. Um, it doesn't bother me the same way it does others. Yeah. It, um, it especially if either. your one year was the most recent year. And Right, exactly. And a really, really good year. It's not like six sacks. We're talking 12 and a half. 12 and a half is big time. Um, Big time. Big time. (laughs) So Kareem Jackson trying to big time me. (laughs) Gosh, I can't believe he said that. He's, but he's very clearly in a spicy mood. Oh yes, he is. Yes, he is. I want that Kareem. Yeah, I hope so. Stay spicy. Yes. Yes. I agree. That's, that's the, (laughs) that's the Kareem we need. I agree. And uh, let's hop over to another prospect right now and talk about Leo Chanel from Wisconsin, Chanel? a linebacker. Uh, it's Chanel. It yeah, is. Yeah. S S. Okay. And is this the pronunciation yes, guy? Yes. In little words, S H A. Sh. Dash. Dash. In all caps, N E L L. Yeah, Chanel. Chanel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't have known that. What, Designer what linebacker. <laughs> really? Yes. Leo Chanel coming in from Wisconsin, which I don't think is a linebacker type of school. I think that's more of like the Carhartt type of school. Well, I don't know. It depends on what kind of linebackers you like. Mm. Like, do you like Josie Jules? Because they're coming out of Wisconsin every year. But I, no, I'm saying that's the Carhartt mentality, though, not the Chanel designer oh, type oh, of mentality. Oh, I see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. Yes. No, I'm not saying not good. Yeah, I don't think you're seeing a lot of Chanel on no, campus. I, I don't <laughs> think Wisconsin. so. Doesn't look like Leo would be wrapping that, uh, <laughs> would be bringing that as he's got tape around his arm in this picture. He's 6'3, 250 pounds. Uh, and according to our draft, guys his strengths super a superb athlete nine 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 ras score so close to being a fit for me ah he's not that perfect <laughs> 10 he's he has a four five three forty yard dash 40 and a half inch vertical 120 inch broad jump highly productive 2021 season missed first two games and put up 115 total tackles at 18 and a half tackles for a loss and oh. eight sacks oh. i mean how does he have weaknesses but we'll talk about those i guess he says he needs to develop his play recognition and processing skills coverage skills need polished and further development oh man i feel like we're talking about a top 10 pick right now i love this guy yes you do i love him um he's pretty much like everything that i want in a linebacker uh, other than just you know fine-tuning those coverage skills yep. which he has every asset to be able to do that you know if you're a 9-9 RAS guy, which I think Baron Browning was like right up there too. Yeah. Um, you have what it takes to cover people. You're fast, you're long, you know, you're all all the above. Um, so I trust him to be able to learn that. Can we bring the graphic back up? I just like looking at it. Um, <laughs> he has so much yeah. going for him. Mm-hmm. He has instinct. Look at the tackle number. You know, uh, getting into the backfield, slicing through like, you know, like a Micah Parsons. Um, so this is... 
this is the kind of guy that gets me going. This the size six three two fifty. Yep. It, this could be a long term fan favorite inside linebacker, and we've talked about this before. I just love having one of those guys on the team. Mm -hmm. I love having a dominant inside guy that everyone just adores, you know, and he, he that's like going to end up being such a big high selling Jersey when you have like a true fan favorite at that position. Uh, so sign me up, count me in. I'm, I'm a big fan. And so got a lot of people, including Hank in our comment section saying Chanel, uh, or Ch yeah, Chanel, 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 uh, is like Alexander Johnson. And, uh, um, I can see that in terms of, he has all the physical tools really big. And one of the things that he he's, he's banged for a lot is just that initial play recognition, uh, and being a little step slow. So you have to decide, can Evero get out of him and, and fix that with him and help him? Because if he does that, he's going to be a really, really good linebacker. And what's crazy about Alexander Johnson, we were so high on him when he first came in. I mean, he was almost a pro bowler the way he played that first year. He's still on the market right now. Mm -hmm. No no team has signed him right now. And obviously there's some differences. He's much older than you would expect for a guy coming off his rookie contract. Yeah. Uh, and... and why can Chanel. I not? Chanel. 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 Yes, he messes with me. Chanel is a guy who, who's much younger, uh, but that's just what you have to decide with him. Okay, you got so much positivity, but if he's slow in, rec in, in detecting plays, that will hurt him and hurt him a lot more in the NFL than in college. Yes, yes. But he's like the opposite of Josie Jewell, to be honest, in the sense that Josie uses instinct and yep. play recognition yep. to make up for yep. a, a, a lack of athleticism. Yep. Whereas Sh uh, Chanel, <laughs> <laughs> I've just been saying Chanel in my head I know, for so I long. I know, me too. Um, Chanel has the opposite. He yep. can he can make up for his mistake with a little more speed. Now, to be honest, in the NFL, you have to figure out the play recognition because everyone's fast and right. everyone's right. big and everyone's strong. Right. So your mistakes um, are a lot more you know, uh, highlighted when it comes to this sort of stuff. Um, to give an example, like Justin Strenad last year, he's super athletic, super fast, mm -hmm. but if you end up in the wrong hole, you're done. You're swallowed up in the, in the place 10 yards past you before you even get, you know, get your head around. Yeah. Um, so going to have to fix that, but you know, I'm a sucker for these, these athletes, <laughs> yep. nine, athletes. Nine, I mean, nine. nine 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 ras and you look at six three two fifty it's not like you know and, and that's what's great about ras is it's it's not saying how, just right. how fast this this guy is it's based on his size where does he rank among people like him yep so he's as athletic as it possibly gets for that for that size four five three forty you know who's also right around six three two fifty and runs a four five Albert no O. Fan. Yeah. Yeah. A, a really, really fast athletic tight end. Totally. Albert O looks so tall, though. He does. He really does. <laughs> so does Alexander Johnson. I don't mm -hmm. know what, where yeah. he is. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's 6'4. Okay. That, yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. Um, you can almost be a little too tall at that position sometimes. Yeah. Just like a quarterback. I yep. think there's been no successful quarterback 6'6 six, six or taller, right? Well, it's just such a. Le yeah. Exactly. Except such... for Trevor Lawrence. He's the one that could change that. I think it's. Over six, six, six. six seven. Okay, yeah. six, seven. Um, like, I think Mike, that's like called the Mike Glennon line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which Mike Glennon really wouldn't be that tall if it wasn't for his neck. He's your guy. Uh, it's true. It's really long. <laughs> getting like an be? extra three six, inches three? on yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> if you're getting dunked on today and need to relax a little bit, check out our friends mm. over at Light Shade Dispensary. In fact, check out their newest, biggest store. It's their Barnum location, one block off 6th and Federal, where not only is it their biggest, but they have products there that aren't sold at other locations, and they have so many things, including Ripple, which is a fast-acting dissolvable, clinically proven to hit two times faster than the leading gummy, and it starts absorbing within 10 minutes so you can depend on a consistent experience every time. And if you use the code DNVR over at Lightshade, whether you're online or in one of their 11 Denver Metro area stores, you get 25% off all non-sale items. So check them out. Lightshade Dispensary. Use that code DNVR and get 25% off. Yeah, Buana in the comments saying you can't use all RIS scores. I don't think I am. Like, obviously, you can't only draft off RIS score. But if you have RIS score and you're also a baller on tape, right? then, you know, you're my kind of guy. And he is a baller at a school that produces linebackers. 
Yeah, at least in a conference that produces linebackers. Yeah, right. I'm trying to think of other Wisconsin That's true. linebackers that jump out at me, but you know, that that Big Ten style of football yep. usually produces good linebacker play. Yep. Um okay. Where were we just going? Oh, I wanted to say the new Barnum location. Yes. They should present they should be the presenting sponsor of Three Ring Circus. Ah yes, absolutely. <laughs> and then maybe we can get Bailey's to be the other presenting sponsor. Ah, there we go. <laughs> That'd be fun. It would, it would. <laughs> um okay. As we move on here, um what else what else is there anything else we need to get to before we get to uh comments? Minicamp is over wrapped up everyone's healthy everyone's good it was uh, a very energized fun mini camp ryan and the nfl draft starts tomorrow wow it doesn't feel like it no um you know tomorrow would be a really big day if the broncos didn't have a franchise quarterback <laughs> it certainly would be and i'm glad it's not a big day i am so glad i will although i will say they were just breaking down um malik willis on the tv behind us and like they went through the fact that he broke more tackle. He forced more broken tackles than any other player last year, and that just got me kind of hyped uh, up. But we know Russ is a good runner. I obviously don't um, don't want him over Russell Wilson. No, you certainly don't. Last I, night I, I was looking for a clip of Russ potentially throwing the ball to Melvin Gordon. Um, I don't know if Melvin really got on the field at all because he was a no, freshman. I was yeah. looking far and wide to find <laughs> it. Um, but I ended up seeing just a lot of Russell Wilson college highlights, and my God, was he fast back then. That's pretty fun yep. to be watching. Uh, I actually had a dream about a week after the Broncos traded for Russ that they traded Russ – to the Lions in order to get the number two pick in order to draft Malik Willis. That's a terrible, <laughs> terrible idea. Yes, and I was like, why did they do this? I had a dream last night. Did you see that video that went viral on Twitter about the moon being so close to the North Pole? It was totally fake. Yeah, no, I did not. Okay. I saw some talk about it in Slack and I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, well, it was like this guy like made this very edited video of the, of the moon looking like it was like 10 feet away, like you could just reach okay. out and touch it. Okay. Said it was like from the North Pole. It happened okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Anyways, I had a dream that that was happening in Denver last <laughs> night. It was crazy. Did you touch it? No, I didn't. But oh. I was like on my balcony and it fell. Like... <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, maybe. Or it might like explode the universe. That's really true. Yeah, yeah, it probably would do that. Yep. All right. First one. Oh, Super Chats. Let's do that. From Stephen Scholey, Javante and Boone in January or Melvin and Javante in January. Healthy legs in the playoffs is my first thought. Uh, they are buying into a Super Bowl this year. I, I wouldn't go that far. Um, but they're definitely in win now mode. They're buying into a playoff run, that's yep. for sure, because they want Javante and Melvin both healthy and fresh later into the season. Right, and it's a really good point, you know, that Mace has brought up quite a few times, which is if anything happens to Javante, um, you you definitely feel comfortable leaning on Melvin Gordon. Right. All of a sudden, going to Mike Boone, who, by the way, averages 150 yards per game in his starts, <laughs> um, doesn't feel as good um, or as trustworthy. Yeah, tough day for the Mike Boone crowd. I at, know. AKA you. I know. Yeah. It was a tough day for, yeah, for Boone's Farm. <laughs> Boone's Farm. Oh, man. Let's jump into the comment section and talk to Talking Schmidt. It says, hey, guys. Awesome pod. Very excited for Wilson and Hackett. My question for you today is, do you think we will see any struggles from the offensive side since it's a new system for Hackett? Or will it be gold from the beginning since we have Wilson? I think it can go either way. Thanks, guys. Go Broncos. Let's ride. I'm expecting gold. Uh, just like your shirt. Yeah. Exactly. Sparkly gold. Some sparkly gold. Sweet I want, I want that offense to sparkle. Yes. From week one, I don't care who the opponent is. I will panic if it doesn't look good right away. And I will be the voice <laughs> of reason saying, it's okay, Not calm down. Peyton Manning started two and yep, three. Yep. Peyton Manning had three interceptions in the first half against the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, and that's something that we're going to have to try to do a good job here in Broncos country is just you can have really high expectations, but just don't freak out if it's a one and one start. I'll say this. I uh, panic wasn't the right word um, because I'm not going to be like, oh, my God, the season's over. Right. I will have a mental breakdown. Ah, there we go. Yes. OK, a lot of mental breakdowns because, in Broncos country. Because I can't I've just watched bad offense for too long. Mm. Uh, it's why I can't watch the USFL. Um, like I need I need touchdowns. I need explosive plays. And all I think about every night when I go to sleep and every morning when I wake up is explosive plays 
created by this offense. And if they don't happen in my first opportunity to watch it, I'll probably cry. How about three touchdowns, three interceptions? You get in the touchdowns. <laughs> that's not going to happen. That's Hap- like that's like th- three quarters of a season. Happened the first week in Russell Wilson's opening day against the Denver Broncos a couple of years that ago. That happened for the Broncos. Oh, you're right, you're right. You're yeah, right. that was Case Keenum <laughs> who did that. Russell Wilson... That that would be thirty three percent of an of a season of interceptions for him. Yeah, in terms of last year, that would be sixty percent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I'm 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 mostly joking, but uh, I they they should be good from the start. Mm. They have no excuses. They'll be good from the start. Okay. It's okay if they're not great. What's the difference between good and great? Give me a point. Total. Um, twenty six points is good. good. Yep. <laughs> and then twenty tw- twenty nine thirty points is great. All right. I'll allow it. Then they'll average the out defense, to 27 this year. I expect the defense to hold teams to 24 points a game. There you go. That's a win. Yep, exactly. And next one coming in from Pig Tosser 66 says, great, du- great pod, my dudes. Best in the biz, and it really isn't even close. Thank, Thank you. you, Pig Tosser. Needed to hear that after getting slammed on today. This is, uh, this is in your head. It yeah, is in my head. You know, you. I'm thinking about do I respond? What do I do here? Maybe I'll just ask you straight on the pod. What do I do? Do I just do I just throw myself there? Just comment something to um, his response. You could go with the Albright method and say, oh, "I guess that joke fell flat." Right. Even though it was clearly not a joke. I'll take the L. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, could go with that one. Um, you could go with bad question, great answer. There you uh, go. That's the that's the response. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, do I go with tag me next time, bro? <laughs> no, don't do that. I wasn't going to do that. I know you were. Um, yeah. Just I, like raise my hand. You know, the hand raising emoji a couple of times. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a bad question, but, you know, you. you can. Thank you. You can self-deprecate a little bit. And I feel like that's where I'm at, where yeah. I have to be. Yeah. Uh, there, there's no winning this one. He's a player. I'm a reporter. I'm going to lose every time. Just don't be the Chris Paul to his Jose Alvarado. Don't let him live in your head like that. Okay. Okay. We're moving on. All We're right. moving on. You're <laughs> out of my head, Kareem. <laughs> Next one coming in. Oh, oh, you could do come on the pod and discuss. That's a good one. <laughs> ah, yes. Would you like to come on the pod? <laughs> Drop my SoundCloud in there? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Pig Tosser 66 says, uh, he says, I'm already so sick and tired of hearing people complain about Russ being too positive and how he is too rehearsed and it's just an act and blah, blah, blah. What the heck is going on here? So we want a guy who is arrogant like Aaron Rodgers or Cam Newton? I mean, what am I missing? The guy I loves football and loves people and wakes up every day with a positive outlook. And this is a bad thing now? People really are something. I'm pretty stoked we have a Hall of Fame quarterback who is also a good person. And if it's all an act, then the dude is a good actor and he is a good quarterback. And that's cool, too. Uh, is anyone really complaining about this? Uh, I think there's people where you're starting it, to, starting it to see it get on their nerves. Okay. Eh, I get it. Um... I'm with the commenter here. If people are actually complaining about it, like come up with come up with a new slant. Uh, yeah. There's better things to complain about. But w- people aren't aren't saying they want Aaron Rodgers or Cam Newton. They are saying they want Joe Burrow, who's like really cool and doesn't right. seem like he's trying to be right. Right. They they want Drew Locke. It's personality. But good. Yes, but good. Because yeah. how much did people love Drew dancing on the sidelines? When he was good. When he was good. Everyone yeah. loved it. Yeah. And then when he was bad, you got the Colin Cowards of the world. You got fans saying, oh, what a bad look now that he's bad. But if, if he's good, oh, come on. People love it. Everyone yeah, everyone loves that stuff when yeah. you're good. <laughs> yeah. You can pretty much get away with anything with, you can if get you're away good. With anything. If Russell Wilson was bad, oh, man, oh, yeah. people would lose their minds over yes, the corniness. they would. They would. But what can you do? The guy's a baller. Yep, he's good. And, and he's I also, you know, one thing you always got to remember, he's married to Sierra. He is. He so, is. like, he gets, like, a billion cool points yep. without doing anything else. Then he just loses them from there with pretty much <laughs> everything else he does. But he still has a huge head start on the rest of us. He and Sierra, through both of their businesses and all the businesses they team up with, are always taking, like, GQ uh, photo, shot, photo shoots, and they're always posting them to their Instagrams. And he looks like a different person there. He's, like, being all sexy and cool, cuddled up <laughs> with Sierra. And I'm like, is this the same guy? It's so, it's tough. (laughs) I'll admit it. It's tough to watch because it just doesn't, it just doesn't fit him. Right, right. And so then he's like doing that and then he's doing the like uber positive football guy thing. And then he's doing the like super sexy GQ guy. Yeah, yeah. 
I, he's neither. I don't think he's, he's like somewhere in between, but he's much closer to the uber positive football he guy. He is. And you know what? I like uber positive. Also, you know what? Even if it is an act, which I, I really don't think it's an act. I, I think, think it's so. I think it's an over exaggeration of who he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's leaning really hard into right, who he right. is, which I think is a great quality. Yeah. Um, but if it is an act, he's a really good actor. Yeah, he certainly is. Orange is the new sack. And it says, works. Yes. Says Broncos re-signing Melvin is a... Great, Great move. move. I think Javante needs another year before he can fully be our number one running back. I love him as a 1A and Melvin as a 1B. Plus, that's another need off the board. Melvin just has an eye for the end zone, and I can't wait to watch Russ hand it off to him. When Russ got traded, I was at work. I remember just before lunchtime, East Coast. I read Aaron was staying in Green Bay. I was working on replacing an electrical panel when I took out my phone and saw it was 2.30. Day's almost over, I thought. I look a little lower, and I text that I never forget reads, In all caps, we got Russ from another Broncos fan. I dropped my tools out of my other hand and ran to social media as quick as I can. And yes, I couldn't believe it. As others have said, I just had to figure out what we gave up for him. As each piece was revealed, I kept waiting um, for the big old like Judy or Sertan, but nothing ever came. Fleeced. Zach, we got an update in the the Kareem Jackson saga. Oh, no. Mike Kliss has chimed in. In your defense. Yes, my guy, Mike. (laughs) Mike says, no, Kareem. I've asked far worse. Besides, this drew a great made-for-TV soundbite. So great question. Hashtag Zach rides. Hashtag media lives. Are you serious? (laughs) That's a a real tweet. Mike, my (laughs) man. (laughs) Yes. Mike Kliss. Hashtag Zach rides. <laughs> that one's going to live in my head rent free forever. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully a little haunting for you. Uh, yeah. I, I, I've got so many questions. Also, I hope that's media lives. Me, yeah. We, we're, we're alive. You know, P- power oh, to the media. Long live the media. Uh, yes, exactly. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> uh, shout out Mike Kliss for, yes. uh, for having Zach's back. Wow. That's hilarious. Thank you, Mike. Hashtag Zach rides. <laughs> That's you know how uh, Russ ends off every press conference with "Let's Ride." Is that how we're ending off every uh, podcast? Hashtag Zach, Zach rides. <laughs> I'm quote tweeting this right now. I have to. Um, great job, Mike. That's yes, hilarious. We yes. can keep moving on to the questions Thank once you, I Mike. get this tweet Thank off. You, Mike. <laughs> and when you get that tweet off, Orange is a new Slack continues and says, "And the best part about it, my boss, an older guy, always likes to tease me that we had no QB, and he's a Jets fan, so confided in the direction his franchise is headed for some reason. It was only my second week when I told him, and he said, you know you've only been here a week, and you've already pissing me off, jokingly, of course. That's the story, pretty lame, but I figured I'd join the trend. Well, I love hearing it. Love, love all these stories. Um, we'll probably have to like recount them in ten years when Russ uh, eventually retires. Yes, exactly. Two Super Bowl rings later. <laughs> yeah. Pick Doster sixty six. GP just being GP. Roster building masterclass with no holes anywhere on this roster. Are you guys thinking he wants to package picks to go get an impact player, or better yet, Ojabo? Mm, I do think he wants to package picks. Uh, I want it to be a third to move up to get Ojabo at forty. I think it's going to be a fourth or a fifth to move up four or five spots and not Ojabo. Correct. I think he's going to be long gone. I think so too. Um, well, we'll talk about this tomorrow, but we made lists of like, I think he's going to go at the end of the first round. Yeah, I think so too. Yep. And and some team is going to, is probably just as, if not smarter than me. And they would think of it in this way, which is (laughs) like, I would say as, yeah, probably as, um, they're going to think of it in this way, which is uh, an original thought for me, um, (laughs) which is, if well, you, you said it him, yesterday, so they heard yesterday, and now... Well, yeah. no, this one just came into my head Oh, like, okay, okay, today. okay. Um, if you draft him in the first round, you get the fifth-year option, which cancels out the redshirt year that you're going to have to give him. That's a good point. See? A really good point. Some team yeah. might have a great original thought like that. Do... Uh, man, we're going to talk about this tomorrow, but there's a team with two first-round picks at the end of the first round, which we'll talk about tomorrow. Uh, I hate that team. Mm. Um... All right, for Mr. Undrafted, you guys were talking about trade Chubb and our 64 to move up into the 45, 40 to 45 spot. That You'd get higher than that, right? Um, 64 to move up to 40 is a third-round pick. But he says Chubb and 64. Oh, Chubb, Chubb and, and 64. Chubb 64 gets you a first-round pick. Is What's Chubb worth right now if you to were to trade te- him to, to a, a team, team that seems, thinks they're a contender and all they need is a pass rusher? I think they would probably rather go Bradley Chubb than a third. A th- well, I'm saying like if they're 
end of the first round, maybe Ojabo is the one that they would go. But if they're thinking this year, they want to win this year. So, like, maybe it's the Rams. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they lost out on Von Miller. And George Payton says, well, we'll give you another pass rusher. Give us, you know, get us up. But I don't think he would do that. But I do think that would get you into the very end of the first. Of Chubb and 64. Yep. Yep. I could see that. Okay. Um, anyways, he goes, the Seahawks have the 40 and 41st spot. Would they take Chubb now? If so why wasn't he part of the Wilson trade? Uh, and what changes now? No, he, they wouldn't. They probably would have negotiated him in. And I think if the Broncos, yeah. if, they, if they said we'll take Chubb or Fant, do you think the Broncos would have sent Chubb? Yep. Would have, it would have opened up a bigger hole. A very obvious hole, though. Right. And now one, and, one you're getting in the second round. Right. True. But, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Vash the Man says, what is up, my boys? Only question, do you think Lloyd Cushenberry is going to improve this season with Russ under center, or will we draft a center to start to develop? That's all peace, love, and chicken grease. I'm out. P.S. Tim Patrick in the last three seasons has led the league in all receivers and most yards per target while running the go route. <laughs> Let's ride. Advanced statistics are rooting football. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, let me just... So we're going with beep, most beep, yards beep. per target, not reception. Okay. Yards per target so he catches while the running the go route. On the go route. Okay. I like it. And, well, okay. Got to take a step back here. Tim? How many targets on the go route? That's kind of exact. Who also, we, we know one of them is the Drew Locke accidental yes, completion. That had to help. And we know one was an absolutely beautiful play in Dallas. So, and I, this is not taking away from yep. Tim, but it's looking at the sample size. What's the sample size? Now, Tim could explode this this year with not just the sample size increasing, but instead of go routes going for 25, 30 yards, go routes could be going for 50 and 60 with Tim. House calls. Yep. I love it. I, I mean, I like the stat. It's just funny. Yeah, it is really it is. funny. It's very baseball. <laughs> yep. Uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, I don't. Th- Ryan, they can't draft another interior offensive lineman this year. I mean, unless you're going day three, they're not going to try to draft an impact interior offensive lineman. They have Cush at center. They have Glasgow at center. They have Quinn Minerts at guard. They have Natani Muti at guard. That that room's as full as full can be this year. Fair. Fair. And I wonder what Cush looks like with a good quarterback. It's going it, to – and, yes, he said, is Cush going to improve? Yes, he's certainly Everyone going to improve. Is, is he going to improve from the 25th center – to the 21st or is he going to improve to the the 12th is is his future right uh from bad one my dudes it has been so long since bad one blessed these comments but fear not i have not stopped listening or supporting on twitter or supporting on ig or youtube uh you guys are still a very key part of my day to day and i just keep uh and just keep rocking out the great work i just wanted to come here and just praise the genius that is george payton and his team I mean, if you really sit there and think about it, the Russ trade helped George basically retain all the fringe vets that could have bolted to other opportunities if the team did not have the guy at QB. To me, you traded a first and second, and Fant and Shelby and Locke were replaced in free agency. Um, This year, so you traded a first and second this year to secure Wilson, which helped you bring back Jackson and Gordon, and the jury is still out on Bryce, Alexander Johnson, and Kenny Young. Peyton literally can just trade back every pick he has this year if he wants because we have no major hole to overreach for. We never really saw this level of strategy with Elway at the home. GP, we got your back. Till next time, my dudes. I mean, Ryan, it's just something you said earlier. You said there's a, there's a lot of edge rushers. There's a lot of inside linebackers with talent. You just trust wh- whichever route George Payton goes with those guys. Totally. Uh, it, it, Innocent until proven guilty. And it's even more than that. It's like genius until proven not genius. <laughs> and how do you prove not genius? We've got to make some bad moves, which he's yet to do. He really has yet to do. And the the one that we were talking about was passing up on a quarterback last year. It's eliminated now. It is. It's absolutely eliminated. Unless, I mean, it, it's, el- it's eliminated. We could maybe one day go back and look if, let's say, Russell Wilson, knock, knock on wood, plays five years and Justin Fields goes on to be a 15 year solution for the bears. Then maybe you look back and say, Oh, well they, they did it better, but right. he didn't do it bad. No, nope. especially and, if you get a ring. And I don't think this may be the first time we've talked about it since the rust trade about how yeah, we're not thinking about Pat Sertan. And when we think about Pat Sertan, we're not thinking of Mac Jones or, or Justin Fields. Pat Sertan might be the biggest winner on the, on the team, just in the sense that no one's comparing him to a quarterback anymore. Yep. He just gets to go be, uh, an all-time great defender and everyone is going to love him 
his jersey sales probably skyrocket this year. In fact, I'm I'm not big on having the quarterback jersey. Um, like if I was gonna get a new one, I probably wouldn't go Russ. It's just a too little, popular. It's a little too mainstream for me. A PS2 jersey is really sick. Yeah, it's really. And you cool. don't have to think about like ah oh, he was the the wrong answer to right, a quarterback right. problem anymore. And he's 22 years old. He made a sick play in practice today. It was just one. I mean, it wasn't even one on ones. It was just a really nice interception where the ball he shouldn't have got to the ball. He sprints to it, somehow gets to it, and then I mean a fingertip catch. It would have been a beautiful catch for Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, mm. Tim Patrick, and he made it. Yeah, he's gonna get extra love this year. Yeah, which is dope for him. And hopefully. He's getting extra interceptions because teams are forced to throw because they're down in the fourth quarter because the Broncos have Russ. Here we go, Zach. First person to not like this move from Broncoholic. Oh. Hey, guys, I'm commenting today with some major disappointment in one of George Payton's decisions. Wow. I know that that's rare these days, but why would he re-sign Gordon right before the draft? Maybe we could trade him later for a pick. Please let that happen. And for up for $5 million, hopefully a majority of that is based off if he has no fumbles. In Peyton's place, I would have happily uh, paid that to see Gordon on any other team. If he stays with the Broncos this season, I would say the over/under on footballs uh, went up by at least two, or on fumbles this season went up by at least two and a half. But what would you put it at? Meanwhile, Lindsey is still available, and I bet you could get him for three million or less. He still has career zero career fumbles, twenty one less than Gordon. Yeah, I mean, and here's here's the thing, Broncolic, uh, is Phil you. Definitely could have got Philip Lindsay for three million or less. Right now, that's what you're getting Melvin Gordon at, unless he has a good year, and then he's going to be more expensive, and that's okay because he's going to have a good year, and you're still not paying the running back room that much money at all. If Melvin hits that five, Javante's making two and a half this year, Mike Boone's making two, you're still only around what you were paying Melvin just last year. So, in terms of a value, I, I think you got a great value here, uh, and I do think it, the timing's interesting. And I think the timing was actually kind of the opposite. You're saying, why did the Broncos do this? I think the Broncos actually reached out to Melvin and said, you got to decide. Is it us now or are we drafting a guy in the third round? Because if we draft a guy with in the fourth round, he's going to be our second or third running back and we're just going to have no space for you. Yeah, and doing it before the draft is actually a smart move, not a bad move. Um, because you have a known commodity now rather than rolling the dice on the position in – probably the third round at the earliest yeah um we don't, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily want to see that i re i literally would have just rolled with with mike boone and and javante and maybe brought in philip Lindsay. right um but not because philip Lindsay is the same player because of everything i outlined earlier um i think he would have been just a nice addition to the room there's no more room in the room anymore um melvin great move it does give me anxiety but I'll I'll stay positive. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Ryan, we'll talk about a, a win now window. There's going to be a lot of conversation on when the Broncos' true win now window is. But regardless of when the perfect window is, this is a win now team, and it's going to be every year that Russell Wilson is on this team. And this is a, a win now move. And there is no one the Broncos could have drafted in this draft realistically. So I'm taking the Kenneth Walkers off the board because the Broncos weren't going to get one in the first or the second round or even the third round, in my opinion. It, there was no one the Broncos are going to get on day three that was going to be even close to as good as Melvin Gordon is this year. So this move right here helps them this year more than any move in the draft in terms of the running back position. I like it. I like it. All right, that's all the questions, right? Any more uh, last-second Super Chats, Kale? Nope. All right, that wraps it up for us today. Here's how it's going to work. Tomorrow we're going to yes. do an early podcast before the whole draft. Um, so you're going to get all you're going to get hours and hours of content <laughs> yeah. from us tomorrow. So early morning podcast before the before the draft talking a little bit more about the draft, maybe a little more draft previewy than we've been up to this point. Then tomorrow is the first pick at or is the, the first pick go on the clock at 6? Yes. All right, so 550 Boom. tomorrow we will go live with a crew of all crews. We'll be here. Uh, we'll be having fun, having drinks, enjoying the draft. It's going to be the most laid back relaxed draft show yes. we've ever done but that's only just the beginning so yeah. we'll be live for the entire first round probably and beyond tomorrow uh and then on friday we're we're live for all of rounds two and three and beyond Let's again go. then on saturday 
We're going to hit you with a full draft recap show, show after it all wraps up. So stick with us. We're hoping to have some uh, exciting guests tomorrow in studio. Still working on that. Um, but regardless, let's, it's going to be me. It's going to be Zach. It's going to be Mace. We're going to have the draft guys in here. Uh, it should be an absolute ball. So we'll see you in the morning, and then we'll see you again tomorrow night. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you tomorrow on the DNVR Broncos podcast.